Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to be continuing with the conveyor belt tutorial and showing you how to make buttons that will turn the belt on and off and change the speed of the belts. I'm going to be continuing off of the same project from part one so if you haven't seen part one I suggest watching that before continuing with this one. So this is where we left off. We have our belts and our boxes and the belts will move these boxes but what we want to do is have switches to turn the belt on and off and change the speed that these objects move at when they're on the belt. So the first thing I'm going to do is just create my buttons using primitives so come up to the top left select game object 3D object and we're going to just use a cube. We'll make this look a little more button shaped or kind of like a panel I guess put it up beside the belt and I'm gonna call this power switch this will be my on off switch I'm gonna duplicate that drag it over and this will be my speed switch and I'm gonna to wanna to drag both of these objects into the conveyor belt to have them a child of this conveyor belt Let's just rotate this belt on an angle. Remember control, holding down control will snap rotate your object. And I'm going to be using the same script from the last project, my conveyor belt script. So open that up in Visual Studios. This should be similar to what you have if you were following part one. And we want to add some more variables here. So one of the variables we want to do, actually I'm going to change this variable to current speed instead of just speed because we're going to modify this value and we're going to want to make another int called max speed. So this is the maximum speed that the object will move at. This is the current speed that we will modify. And that means we want to change it here in our on trigger stay function. We're going to need a game object for the main camera in our scene, which is the first person character camera. We're going to need another game object for the power switch. That's going to be a public game object. We're going to apply that in the editor. We're going to need another one, obviously, for our speed switch. I'm going to make another one and this one's going to be called button hit. This is going to be which of the two buttons was hit by our ray cast. That's what we're going to be using to check for the button hit is ray casts. And of course I'm going to need a boolean called belt on. And it'll basically say if the belt is turned on or if the boolean is true the belt will be turned on. If it's false the belt will be turned off. So we're going to need the start function, Unity's built-in start function. And in there, we're going to want to get that main camera. So I'm going to use find game object with tag. So game object dot find game object with tag. And we're going to be looking for the main camera tag. That's already set up in Unity for you. And the tag should already be on the main camera of the first person or the FPS controller when you import it in your project. And we're also going to want to set button hit equal to null. We don't want anything in that object right now. We're also going to need the update function. This is where we're going to check for our ray cast, or we're going to check for a button press first, and then we're going to check for a ray cast. So we want to do an if check, if input dot get key down. I'm going to use get key down. So when the button is pressed down, and this is the button that you want to specify, we're, I'm going to just going to use the left mouse button, mouse one. If the left left mouse button is pressed, then this is where we want to check for a rate cast. So I'm going to use a function for that. It's going to return a bool value, and that bool value I'm going to return 
if it's true, that means that we've hit one of the two buttons, our speed or our power switch. If not, I'm just going to return it false. So we want to make a local bool variable called ray hit button. We're going to set that equal to false right off the start. That's what we're going to return in this function is ray hit button. So let's check with that ray cast. So the first thing we want to do is get the middle point of our camera. So we need the horizontal, which is our x, will equal the screen dot width divided by 2. And of course we'll need our horizontal, our y screen height divided by 2. We'll make our ray, which is going to be the main camera. We actually need to get the camera component from that camera object. And we want to use a function called screen point to array. And that's going to take a point on your camera that we specify, which is going to be our X and Y, the middle point of the screen. And that's going to cast a ray from that point. We'll also need a ray cast hit. I'll just call it hit. That's the point that the ray will hit. And this is where we actually cast our ray. It's physics dot ray cast. We're going to pass in our ray, our hit as an out. And we need a distance here that the ray, the maximum distance that the ray will cast to. Uh, I'm just going to hard code it to five for now. You can make that a public value if you wanted. And we want to do an if check here. If our hit dot collider dot game object equals the power switch we want to set ray hit button equals to true so we have hit one of the two buttons and we want to set the button hit equal to the power switch that's the button that we've hit and we're going to want to do another check for our speed switch And that's all we need to do for this function. Just make sure you have return our local bool variable that we made at the end. So if we've hit one of the two buttons, we want to check which button we've hit. So if we've hit, if the button we've hit is the power switch, then we're going to want to turn the belt on or off. So I'm going to make a function to do that. It'll just be a void function. I'll call it power switch. So we want to check if the belt is on. We want to set the belt off. And if it's not on, we want to set it to true meaning the belt is on. So we want to call that function right here. And then we want to do the same thing for speed. If we've hit the speed button, we want to change the speed. So we'll make another function for that. Just avoid, call it change speed. So we want to compare it to the max speed. So we check our current speed and make sure that that, we want to see if that is equal or greater to our max speed. And if it is, we want to set that back to zero. So you can kind of cycle through the speeds. If it's not at that maximum number yet, then we want to increment our current speed. So current speed plus plus, meaning current speed plus equals one. We want to call that function here. And one more thing we want to do is in our onTriggerStay function, we want to wrap 
our move towards code here in a, the belt on bool in the if check we only want to move these objects if the belt is on and if everything is set up correctly this should work so let's go back to unity after you saved first thing we need to do before testing this out is apply our values in the editor so our power switch goes here speed switch go here this doesn't need to be applied current speed I'll leave at 0 max speed I'll make 5 and this I'll just duplicate this belt move it under here Oops. so just double check make sure everything's set up correctly our first person character has the main camera tag on it so let's press play and test it out so they shouldn't move at the start. You can see in our editor window down here on our conveyor belt script, my current speed is right now is zero. If I go back into the game, left click on the mouse button. I think this is my speed switch. Yep, now my speed is one. And if I cycle through that, you can see the number change. If I get to five and click again, it'll go back to zero. If I turn the belt on, nothing happens because my speeds at zero if I switch to one they start moving slowly and the higher the number the faster they move right to the next belt if the speeds high they fall off and same thing for this belt so now our belts are a little more fun to use and that's all I wanted to go through in this tutorial Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or you're getting any errors, comment them below and I'll try to get I'll try to help you out as soon as I can. Uh, I think for the next tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to pick up these boxes so that you can drop them on the belt or throw them. That'll give more fun stuff to do. And yeah, thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time.